Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com, and in this video today, I want to do a quick review of the common types of compressors or air pumps that you'll find used in aeration systems today. Now, these are just a representation of the many sizes and variations of pumps that you'll find in use, but they give a good um, rundown or an example of the common ones that uh, certainly are being used in most systems today. And they cover a range of all sizes of ponds, from small ponds and backyard ponds that are pretty shallow to multi-acre lakes and some ponds and lakes that are as deep as 50 feet. So I think we have a, a good, good rundown here. And, and I'll go over each one and talk about maybe its, its uh, strengths, its pros. Maybe if it has a few uh, issues or limitations, we'll cover those too. And we'll also talk about use cases where a particular pump would commonly be utilized because fitting a pump in an aeration system to a pond based on its size and depth is really important. If you undersize too much, you won't get the results that you want out of it. And there's no reason to go way, way over. It just simply, in a sense, wastes money. You spend more than you need to to get the same, you know, to get a job done, let's say. So I think it's important to dial that in when somebody's looking for an aerator for their pond. The other thing I want to mention real quickly is if you're new to this aeration uh, research, if you're not sure exactly what we're talking about, with subsurface aeration, we use a land-based pump like one of these that's put near a power source, typically 115, but they can be wired for 230 in some cases. And we will generate air, pushing it through a hose, which will connect to a diffuser that sits at the bottom of the pond. There may be systems that have multiple diffusers sitting at the bottom of the pond, but out of that diffuser comes a very fine bubbled air uh, mass, and it will increase oxygen in the pond, all over the pond from top to bottom, and it will increase circulation throughout the pond. This is extremely good for fish, very protective of them, can help with their growth rates, can help with their health, uh, it's extremely useful if you have ponds with certain issues like algae growth. It can help with that in some cases, and if it doesn't directly, it will support other ways that you can go at treating a problem like that. And uh, so it's a, it's a very useful tool in pretty much any size of pond. So that's what we're talking about here, and these pumps are the real engines of those systems. So <clears throat> first off on my left, this is a linear diaphragm-based compressor. You would typically see these used in shallow ponds and smaller ponds. And in the case of this one, it's rated for about 15,000 gallons. And it will work to a depth of about seven feet. Now, that is one of the, the key things about these linear compressors. They are not made for deep water. They are rated, should be rated, uh, to depths of, we see a range, some are good for six feet, some seven or eight. Not too many go beyond eight feet. There might be a few, but I tend to try to give it a little bit of room off of that max depth rating, maybe a foot uh, less so that I'm not pushing it to the limits. But what happens is if you exceed the depth rating for a pump like this, it in effect burns or wears out the diaphragms prematurely. So instead of replacing them once a year or every two years, uh, people end up having to replace them every couple months, and that's just not a, a good productive thing. Um, the benefits of a pump like this, though, are they're very economical to run. This uh, particular compressor, which is the Alita AL40, it produces 2.5 cub cubic feet per minute of air, which is very good out of a single diffuser. Uh, it draws 46 watts and is pretty quiet at 36 decibels. I'm not sure of how far away that reading was taken, but 36 decibels is pretty quiet. And so you get a very good air output for very little cost. And then up front, a pump like this might cost a couple hundred bucks. So it's pretty, pretty affordable to get in hand. And this is one of the reasons that these linears are so popular with some of the DIY folks. Uh, who are putting their own systems together. Uh, also, they're used with solar DIY. And I, I can understand why that is, because it's a good little pump for the right job. I think where people run into problems with it is this depth issue. They try to get too much out of a small pump, thinking that it's going to affect 
uh, a body of water maybe then that's larger than what it can really move or or you know affect in terms of its circulation power and then they push the depth rating too far and they end up getting into some uh, trouble troubling issues with performance and reliability and you just don't need to do that just make sure that whatever you're having to work with in your pond size and depth you get a pump that's well uh, well suited and capable of handling those kind of parameters and you'll be fine with these. These only run by the way on 115 volt. Uh, maintenance is minimal. Uh, some have air filters that you would replace. There's a top one here that would be replaced and then the diaphragms which is the air producing component will be replaced maybe once every year to two years and so not too bad on maintenance. Some of these also will be available with weather proof or weather resistant uh, covers included and so that can save some money uh, as well. Very good little performers. Next up we've got two rocking piston compressors. Same type of compressor using a piston to create the, uh, the air output but one has one piston and the other has two pistons and this is rated as a quarter horsepower rocking piston compressor. Um, it can be wired for 115 to 230 volt. It is commonly used in any ponds from a quarter acre up to maybe even two acres if you have enough depth to work with. It can power one to two diffusers. Really you shouldn't power more than that. Your, your airflow gets too diluted but one to two works great. The air output on this pump is 3.2 cubic feet per minute of air which is great out of one and certainly very acceptable out of two diffusers. It draws 2.2 amps on 115 volt, can be wired for 230 if you want, and has a three-year warranty. Uh, in fact, these three pumps all have three-year warranties on them, and so they're, they're very solid. Um, the rocking pistons are, are kind of the workhorse of the industry for these aeration systems because they have a, such a broad capability of, of acceptable ranges. In other words, they can work in six feet down to 40 or 50 feet in depth, so they cover a lot of ground and they can run multiple diffusers. Like I mentioned with this one, it will work up to two of them. With the half horse, we've got uh, 4.8 cubic feet per minute of air output, and that's on 3.5 amp draw on 115 volt, and we would typically use this to power two or three diffusers. And um, in most cases, I think if you have enough depth to work with, generally if you have about 10 to 12 feet of depth where each diffuser can be placed, you can almost cover or pretty much cover a one acre size area with a single diffuser. So this pump would actually work up to about three acres, if not just a little more. And uh, again, very good performers. Maintenance on these two would involve watching the air intake filter cartridge and replacing that as needed. Normally that's going to happen once a year, but in some really dusty, dirty environments you might need to do it more often. But once a year is a good idea because it keeps the airflow good coming into the pump. The second point of maintenance with these rocking pistons would be there are rubber seals and gaskets on and around the piston and piston chamber and eventually, usually at about three years on. Some may go a little less, some will go longer, but somewhere in that time frame you'll see compression or output of the pump dropping. If you have multiple, diffuser, multiple diffusers in the pond, you will see air stop on one of them, or bubbling would stop on one of them, and the other two might look fine, pump will be running as normal, but that's indicating that your air output is dropping. And so when you see that, you want to turn the pump off and you want to go ahead and get a rebuild kit. Now all manufacturers have these kits available where you replace these components and you can bring the pump back up to good operational status and it's easy to do on site. A few simple tools, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes of time and you're good to go again. So they're very, um, very good pumps to work with, very good performers and uh, economically speaking, this one roughly would be 15 bucks a month to run 24-7, this one closer to 25. And, uh, you know, for covering the area that they do, it's pretty economical operation. So uh, definitely something you're going to see a lot of in most of the packages online today. And, and they work fine for DIY stuff, too. Uh, just if you have a deeper pond that you have to work with, let's say beyond eight feet, six or eight feet, this is probably your go-to pump. On my right, we have what's called a rotary vane 
compressor. This is a one horsepower RV100 rotary vane pump, and it is uh, typically used, at least in our case, in industrial settings, but we do have some pond owners use it. It's good for powering six diffusers. This type of pump is typically not rated for super depths. Uh, it, medium depths are okay. I think the rating on this one goes down to about 18 feet. So what we're really looking to use this in is very large waters with you know, low or shallow to medium depths, nothing greater than 18 feet. And when we have that, this might be the best fit for the job. Uh, in terms of air output, it is 13.5 CFMs on uh, 14 amp draw, that's on 115 volt. This one is wired for 230, and that's typically, in most cases, how we would, would get these. And again, it's a very specific use case. Uh, if I have more depth to deal with, I'm, I'm more or less going to have to go to a rocking piston and sometimes multiple or tandem rocking pistons to cover the six diffuser array that this one does. But nevertheless, um, in the right setting, the rocking piston uh, is good, and in the right depth, uh, with less than 18 feet, the rotary vane could be a very good, uh, very good choice. So, uh, in all, I think you know this is probably what most of the industry is using now, and there is a pump for every job, for the most part. You just need to make sure that you know the size and the depth that you're dealing with in your pond, and you can likely fit a compressor and an aeration system to it quite well and get very good results with it. So if you have any questions on any of these compressors or if you need help fitting an aeration system to your pond, uh, easy to do, happy to help. It would only take a little bit of information from you for us to get started and there's no real obligation to doing it. We want to make sure you're set up right. So get in touch with us at AmericanAeration.com if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help. So thanks for joining me today and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.